But uh, nah. I, I was never taught what laws there are. I was never taught what laws there are. Let me repeat, I was not taught the laws for the country I live in. What do you do? That one didn't age quite so well. What do you do? It's not uncommon for YouTubers to try and use their platform to kickstart a music career. Musicians on YouTube. And that's where Dave found his That is weird, huh? Like there was a there was a need for it and he literally like milked it operations had on his channel now that's not to say he didn't put in work he clearly knows how to shit out a well-made project yeah. and some of his most famous videos were original ventures conceived and produced by him alone one of the first of these collaborations would be with fellow brit emma blackery where he remixed one of her songs titled the promise with emma herself in the video providing vocals oh look you can download the mp3 from the description epic win let me let me grab my ipod touch with this song and his later projects, we're first introduced to a common topic seen in most of his work. A, a unifying theme, if you will. And that's mental health and the issues surrounding it. This will be more important later on, but for the time being, it's worth remembering that his Dave whole, was like, creative. Shtick, like, the uh, he, uh, he literally, like, whatever. Form yeah. for mental health awareness. That but it's cheesy, bro. Spoke to his fan base that then would have consisted of many young people. For many, Dave was a voice for the voiceless a shy little emo guy who was just like I by his own like, admission, like, meaning he was in relationships that involved multiple romantic partners. Dave would often relate to his why, fans, why speaking about the that? challenges that faced young people with non-conventional lifestyles. One song he made was all about the hate he had received throughout his life for his unconventional appearance, and that regular guys are just intimidated by him because Bro, he's so br- if, if, if that's his problem, then like, because you do look ugly, bro, either change it up or like like change the fit go to the gym like yeah i agree bro <laughs> you, you you looking like somebody bro and cool looking like i'm something. so sure of myself that i'm practically reaching the donna you're that guy that says no homo after he eats a banana i got that confidence that only comes with competence but judging from your comments you've got some internal conflict and and he doesn't care about their insults that's why he made a five minute rap video talking about how much yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of ironic. But he does not care about their insults. Why do you keep bringing up their insults? He doesn't care. Stop asking Why about their insults. Yeah, he oh. uses the F slur in the first word of the song. <laughs> <laughs> wait, really? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, let me, let's not play that. Well. Well, no longer would he keep these thoughts to himself. Don't Stay in School is a three minute musical adventure where Dave laments the, the modern education system and outlines all the useless Dude, this destroyed the algorithm when it came out. Taught, as God well as proposing damn. some more useful information that would be more applicable to modern I hope life. The youth to say the song blew up doesn't video, really though. do it justice. For a few weeks, it completely took YouTube by storm yeah. and created a pretty substantial conversation Literally online about the merits and pitfalls the algorithm. of school. There are now literally thousands of reaction videos wherein most people agree with him, probably making some empty remark about how Yeah, yeah, school is useless. Yeah, yeah, he, he's spitting facts. Okay, okay, I think that, uh, okay, no, but there's some people that, that, um, yeah. Sorry, I'm being, I'm being too harsh. <laughs> the most popular of these reactions oh, were obviously my the f God, no, might say please, no, no. Slavery. West. Right, so this is like a borderline scale education reform <laughs> by this geezer. Jane but as I've Smith aged and been lyrics. embittened by the world, I can't help but see a few logical flaws in the song. Yeah, they are. spent a lesson on current events. Instead, I studied the old American West. Right, so this is like a borderline Jaden Smith. Like, he's yeah. talking about how learning about history is useless. Like, David, I, I think I think maybe there's some history that might be, uh, might be yeah. pertinent to teach children. I spent a lesson on current events. Instead, I studied slavery. Well, I think what I well, I don't think that's the point of the. I, okay, I think he's like reaching a little bit because I don't think that's the point of what he was talking about. I think what he was trying to say was like certain stuff in history, like we don't have to learn about it all. Uh, I mean, do I agree? I'm a history person, so I pretty much I don't see the ignorance like i me personally anything in history can be applicable basically and there's no like uselessness to learning any very minute even the most minute minuscule probably worthless like information it's just it's interesting to me anyways uh, 
another video he would put up that holds the record for the most I, I that was a content of all time goes to this video where Dave basically spends 13 what minutes figuratively Dude, sucking he has no hair in his arms, bro. <laughs> actual child slave owner Elon Musk. So who is this superhero that's saving us from the brink of collapse? There was a genius billionaire in that picture, but it wasn't Robert Downey Jr. The dude chilling with Tony Stark was- Adolf Hitler! Gr Grant- Wait, wait, what? They were in a movie? Said it was made he was well an Iron Man? Who, who did he play as? Like realized what a colossal scrot Elon is. is it just the a fact random? this is still up, just, man. <laughs> okay, let's do a quick side quest. Dave's sister, Hannah, in 2011 oh, no. would create a YouTube channel of her own called White English Girl, oh, where she would upload no. videos relating to Japan and Japanese language learning. That name, man. Why, why, wait, why is she like... They're both the same. Like, I, li I like it. It's straight to the point. She started out with musical content in a similar vein to Boy in a Band. And some of these names, like, is, is this satire? <laughs> Regardless, like, it's funny. She did a lot of videos rapping in Japanese, you know. I don't know what the fuck she's saying, but, you know, she's she spit. It's funny because it's not really, like, there is a video that I have saved where uh, the person is like, uh, like she's super fluent. She's Austrian and she's like extremely fluent in J Japanese, bro. And apparently she was studying a year or a couple years or something there, incredible. But this girl, you know, I mean, I mean, I guess she could speak it, but she still got the accent of a British person. Dave frequently featured on the channel around 2016, appearing in a majority of her videos, even as she moved away from musical content in favor of vlogs and challenge videos. She amassed almost 50,000 subscribers, and whilst a fraction of her brother's following, it's still nothing to scoff at. But in early yeah, 2018, she would cease uploading, with a vlog of her and Dave exploring Harajuku being the last piece of content posted before the channel went dark. In September of 2015, Dave would go on a hiatus for almost a year, returning on August 10th, 2016 to mass rejoicing. For the next year, he would settle into his usual routine of music slash comedy. In July of 2017, he would even appear on Glam and Gore's YouTube channel. Oh, it's another connection. It's the Node Armstrong cinematic universe, baby. In October of 2017, Dave would channel. participate in his most high profile and controversial collaboration. Ian Washburn would travel to Brighton, England, and the two would write and record the diss track slash diss track parody, Asian Jake Paul, for Ian's upcoming content cop on controversial YouTuber, Brian Lee. Unfortunately, this content cop would be deleted, so all we have left are um, some 240p re-uploads. David featured heavily in the song, dropping some That's bars, weird, as, as the youngsters else. might say. Yeah, You've been pretending ever since your little rice balls descended. Let kids think you did it all when you weren't capable of making a playground insult. This performance was the most outwardly hostile we had ever seen him, as this was the first instance of David ever involving himself in YouTube drama. As for what he actually wow. said, or, or rapped, I mean, it wasn't that bad. He calls Brian it's narcissistic cringe, no. and selfish. Insults that would be validated by Ian's video that predicated the music video. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, later that October, he posted a pseudo-apology in which he expresses regret for some of the things he said and takes responsibility Bro. for negative comments his words had inadvertently encouraged. Energy. I don't really think it warranted this much hate, and I want to take responsibility for my actions here. He travelled to LA to make his apology in person, and he finally made contact, and, and oh, it was Casey Neistat all along. Okay. Oh, he fooled us. What a prank. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh ha, ha. At the start of 2018, Dave would go on hiatus for oh, making videos for a few months, minutes, returning maybe. in late April with a badass know, new look. Yar, what a scurvy sea dog. Oh, he dyed his little beard like his hair. Now, now that is fun. He probably yeah, the backlash the of the beard was expected. Allegedly, it was all a bit. Yeah, yeah, Dave's a bit of a comedian, it seems. I do like it. Why? Because it makes you look stupid. <laughs> Why? He's he's a regular and practical joker once he gets his hands on the beard dye. Look, we can't both look like this. It's been ages since you've been on my channel. They don't remember you. People are just going to think you're me in a stupid hat. Mate, if I was just you in a hat, how could I do this? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
I like to think Dave secretly recorded two videos, like like one for if people hate the beard, he just makes jokes and self-deprecates, and one where if people like it, it's just him unedited for five minutes reading his manifesto. The age of consent is just too darn high. It lasted all of two weeks before it was shaved off in a video titled Shaving My Beard and Describing My Crippling Depression. <laughs> After this debacle, Dave would travel to Cali and attend uh, VidCon in 2018, dubs, where he did whatever a YouTuber does at VidCon. I I'm assuming taking a lot of photos with fans, as well as Roman-style orgies in the hotel penthouse. While he was here, he got a chance to meet up with various YouTubers That's he had nasty, befriended bro. online. And, and a, as like, a result, in, in he began a spot to plan like over there in a convention, bro, like, with done them. Any And most else, of these YouTubers would exist yeah, within the then exclusive anyway, animation so story time community. So the next anyways. few months Desperate mark the period I refer to as the big string of animation collaboration. But don't let the whimsical name fool you though. These songs were depressing. The first of which being with Jaden Ditfuck, aka Jaden Animations, <laughs> with the song morbidly titled empty. They weren't exactly subtle with the fact that it was about anorexia and bulimia. Every single lyric is some kind of thing that related song, double entendre. Upon release, the like song it. was praised both artistically and technically, with people mainly applauding Jaden's honesty and bravery. For the video to accompany the song, they interspliced scenes she, of Dave I think and Jaden she, singing their The respect. funny thing is, I'm pretty sure she said that, um, she already said that before in a, in a past. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going. I don't know why I know the these, these inf this information. In I do. Dramatic segments. I don't of even Jaden care about to eat a sandwich and weighing herself and crying. It's very edgy, but it certainly gets the point across. Jaden deleted the official version in the wake of the later 2022 drama, so currently only re-uploads exist. To coincide with the release Makes of the sense. song, Dave She's posted the official behind the scenes on his own channel. But I mean, it's a good thing because the song is not that good, anyways. Hey, Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> to make the song, Dave traveled to Arizona to meet with her, and whilst in the state, would also team up with another famous Arizona resident. He would team up with famous child entertainer. <laughs> he would team up with famous child entertainer Robert Rallison, and the two oh. of them would create the song Life is Fun. Because James's audience weren't old enough to understand serious topics, they decided to make a wacky comedy song where yeah. James sings about how happy he is, and Dave in response sings about how bad things are. I could be like, the sun's shining, and you could be like, the sun's going to explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Ooh, I feel like we could talk about, like, racism. I could, that could be one of, the, like, the negative thoughts. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay, James. hold on, bro. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Like, if I, if I said it like this, bro, Obviously, it would be a joke, but the way this guy said it, it, I don't know if he's joking or if he's being dead serious. Like, yeah, we can, we can talk like, about stuff. Like, I worked hard to get this job. Like, statistically, people with white yeah. names are more oh, yeah. valuable than black names and stuff like that. But now, Dave was hungry for a bigger challenge. A bigger fish, and what he caught, oh, oh, was the biggest of them all. Felix Schelberg, aka PewDiePie, was at the time the largest YouTuber on the site. However, after a long publicity campaign to remain on top, the writing was on the wall, and it was clear he was soon to be overtaken by Indian media giant T Series. So, in preparation yeah. for this loss, he brought in David as well as another musical YouTuber. To and be fair, Sweet. I don't know how much money PewDiePie made off the whole thing, but dude, I that was like the smartest, like. You know you're going to lose anyways. You don't really care, bro. Let me see how much money I can milk off of this. Let me see how much clout I can get. That is the smartest, most ingenious way. And, and like, bro, people were spending money to get the word out for PewDiePie. Like, it's crazy, bro. I think even, I think people even started, like, botting some subs for him. But, I mean, that's not enough. You're literally fighting against the whole population of india how many how many people live in india bro like 1.5 billion that's one country uh bro they dude 1.4 i'm telling y'all bro they're literally like they're built like dude they're like they're like rabbits bro i mean that's racist but <laughs> yo they, they're like rabbits bro what the hell uh <clears throat> wait what oh okay i was i thought it was going down from the eight okay that's actually pretty good actually it's good it's good it's kind of weird how there's a lot of male surplus like here and there's none for the female side but then it it becomes bigger when they're older i guess 
the men die a lot faster. I, I don't know. Let, let's compare this to. I actually want to see this USA population. I just want to see this real quick. I guess this is common, huh? Cause like, women just they just don't die as, as like men. Yeah, look at this, bro. The drop off is crazy. Like men just tend to die <laughs> a lot before women do. I mean, kind of sad. Maybe it's the fact that like men uh, like I don't, know, I don't know actually i'm not gonna speak i'm not gonna speak on that Rumi. they would create the song congratulations which was immensely popular on the website yeah, and saw everyone involved that. receiving praise for making such a catchy song but to my surprise dave didn't come out of this completely scot-free another music youtuber sean alika who had known dave intimately sometime in the past came out with a diss track on him named dissing my ex where they would scold dave for i'm not gonna lie he pulled he pulled um like the right like like if we had to base him off of numbers like he's average maybe and she's average too like which they're like maybe negative because like the butt chin and the masculine looking lit oh my hey, yeah hold on bro she might be a four the more i'm looking but at I her guess it's not my place, three. So baby but three is like three and twos is like for like the actual ugly people so she Without makeup, she probably a four, low key. But I, I'm gonna keep her as a five, five, maybe six. Yeah, I don't know. There were uh, okay. Anyways, bro, I don't. The iconic bridge God, incident had taken that. place. What a fucking nigga. And he'd also <laughs> controversially partnered with Yo, I love Hero that, bro. I love that. So PewDiePie asked me to review some memes. Memes are this thing uh, where people put funny stuff on my yeah, phone. Yeah, this Elite. was uh, that in age well. Ben Shapiro used to be like a funny like guy. Then, but like, jeez. Yeah, had man. apparently reached out to David, imploring him to not associate with Felix, claiming that by doing so he would be contributing to transphobia, and that despite claiming he was an LGBTQ ally. Dave had Wait, sold out what? his beliefs for fame. Their video was hit with an iconic negative Wait, like to dislike ratio. Most likely this all came from Dave's diehard hold fan on, base. Hold on. But more divisive figure politically. It had only been a few months since the iconic bridge incident. Liga had apparently reached out but put funny stuff on my hold phone. On, John Alika had apparently reached out to David, imploring him to not associate with Felix, claiming that by doing so he would be contributing to transphobia. And that despite claiming he was an LG. What? reached out to David, imploring him to not associate with Felix, claiming that by oh, doing so, man, he would be contributing here, to into 2019. This year is marked by Dave putting less focus on outputting music in favor of more traditional YouTube content. He would collaborate frequently, primarily with Rumi, and the two of them would last be seen in a Google Feud video. Well, what the fuck is that? As most already knew, David had reoccurring struggles with mental health, and around the time he stopped uploading, it's likely he was no longer able to balance his mental health with a full-time YouTube YouTube career. It's possible that the stress of being a public figure is what caused this to- Bro, it's like you got the- like, dude, being a YouTuber is so easy. I mean, like, I'd be think I'd be thinking the same thing, like, eh, but it's like, it really ain't, bro. Do you really want to be working a nine to five, working for somebody else, and then, and then doing things you only want to, like, how how is youtube like no one can tell me youtube is hard is is harder than doing no one wants to do a nine to five no one wants to work at a restaurant at a mechanic shop at i mean unless you love cars at a um like no one wants to be a janitor no one wants to be flipping people's burgers no one wants to be working the cashier in a gas station or at stores or stuff like no one wants to be doing a lot of these things but we need to people to do these things anyways i mean but like but I'm saying if you had the choice, which this guy does, he could just go back and just live the lives that everyone else is living and go figure out what the world really is. This dude, and, and it's funny too, cause um, a lot of people don't get the time to, to just have vacation, but obviously he has such a good fan base that they'll just support him no, one, no matter what. But like, it's funny. 
because he has such a fan base. I mean, he, he, he has like, he can go vacation whenever he wants. He can go do whatever, whenever he wants. He can, he has money to go to therapy. He has money to go talk to people. He has money to get girls or he has the clout to get girls. I mean, like, so what is he missing, bro? Is like, obviously people go through things, right? But don't blame it because of, of YouTube or, or being a public figure. I just think it, uh, that, um, I think that just is a cop out. Like it's like an excuse. I feel like, uh, what's I'm gonna call it? I feel like I feel like when people say this, like if there is if there is like a valid reason, I say the only valid reasoning would be like the fact that it could exacerbate what they're going through, but it can't be the main cause. There's no way. So, whatever, bro. And, and, I mean, I'm not gonna say it because it looked like it. his sister probably chills, so I'm not, I'm not even gonna throw shots. So, I mean, and how lonely he was feeling due to the pandemic. And also that the new medicine he was on had totally thrown off his sleep pattern. He then said he was getting therapy, which would seem like a positive development, but he then went on to ask fans via a poll if he should take all of his medicine at once to, and I quote, speed up the effect. Yeah, bro, take all the medis meds at once and kill yourself. I mean, yo, Twitch, but like, no, like, come on, bro. As a joke, like as a joke, do that. But I'm saying like, Come on, bro. Are you stupid. People overwhelmingly voted in favor. This uh, and then let's just say he's not being serious, right? So you did this for clout, or you did this for attention? Like, bro, you suck. You're losing. We're following the recommended dosage, and keep in mind the internet is known to do a little bit of trolling, especially when it comes to polls. So people telling him not to take it all at once shows that even if he was joking, there was some genuine concern that in his current state he yeah. may just down them all at once. Like even that. back in 2020, Dave was still well into his 30s. So what we're seeing? Oh my God, dude. Bro's pushing 40, acting like this. No, no, no. Yo, okay, well, he, he was probably like 33 or whatever at the time of doing that. Even still, dude, when you're 30, I mean, you shouldn't have it all figured out, but you should be very much close to being on your way. Being here is a 30-year-old man announcing his depression to a fan base of teenagers. And whilst that you can too. choose to view this as him destigmatizing mental health and just being open, I, people I have with things, one foot in reality but I can't, can but see this as him. Look, I'm not going to lie, bro. Look, I and that's the thing I can agree with you. You feel like you need to have a, a, a way of, like, telling people things or whatever. I literally can't tell people things because that, A is a way for people to um, look at you different. B, because um, they're just gonna not care about it anyways. But I mean, of course you could look through all the people saying, yo bro, we got your back. Don't worry, blah, blah, blah. But like, to me, like happiness is temporary. And if you're trying to temporarily, like if you're trying to put a bandaid over like a, a gash that won't stop bleeding, like if you don't put a tourniquet or something like, to actually fix it and you're not doing anything you're just delaying what's going to happen eventually uh which is why you should not open up like 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 this especially with the demographic now i say like let's just say for example because i i feel like i feel like this guy's fan base like i feel like he wouldn't be able to connect to his fans like that for example though but i'm gonna give y'all an example of fan bases i think they would um you know very much be like oh yeah we're we're on board for this i say like a fan base like um like your rageous fan base i feel like i'm dante don't need he, he that type of dude he don't need none of that plus he'll he owe that already like um like plaque plaque boy max's fan base would be would be like one of those you know i kind of want fan bases like that yo, you know but man like if if let's just say kais and i said oh i've been struggling or or speed well i mean speed's fan base probably would would uh would understand more but let's just say kai i feel like kai or any or the only ones i think like because like i think if duke said it I mean, obviously, everybody would be respectful about it, but it'd be like a surprise because Duke, that type of person, you know, he old as hell already, 
you know i feel like they would take it seriously but like someone like phantom like phantom is really genuinely like a, like i've never met him there's no prayer or social thing going on but i just like first impressions right just feel that he is real like he's just a real person like there's no you can't fake you can't fake uh you can't fake uh, uh, uh like yourself you know and i feel like that's what he does I, I he just keeps it real but what you would call it nah uh but i feel like i feel like if someone like kai tried to open up to his fan base it wouldn't work and then for someone like me i can't open up to anybody because it would just be the same way y'all just you know sympathy and attention from his the only people that i could actually do that with is like my real life like people that i know a anything that has to do with the internet is like the internet first and foremost and second of all you can't have like real relationships you can't have no nothing genuine because like the way i see it something happens to you you can't just go and 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 lean on their shoulders or what what have you and another thing uh they're not gonna be there for you most likely if something happens you see what happens with like this chick that he was working with Jaden, and like some of the other people he was working with they don't even want to be associated with this guy no more i mean obviously right he did bad things but it's like bro come on bro like what what is this it's fans I can't emphasize enough how terrible it is to put the burden of your mental health onto your fan base. That David, too. or any YouTuber for that matter, is, is not your friend and you are not close to them. I doubt that Dave was worried about the mental health of his fans. The only reason he needed them was to comment positive things under his cries for attention. For the next year, we would get an occasional depressing tweet or social media update, obviously bringing up the same issues of oversharing that I just covered. But for his online presence, that would be it. The last confirmed visual sighting we would get can be found in a Rumi video titled Rumi and Day 504, our wedding video. Oh look, he what tried the, the beard hell? again. Second time's the charm, Dave. As the months passed and he drifted further and further into the distant annals of YouTube, it seemed like he was destined to be a tragic memory. A unique creative who took the bold choice to prioritize himself and his own mental health over internet fame. But, in 2022, yeah. That would if, if, if you if you straight off like if you straight you don't need none of that I, I you know support that obviously you know work on yourself but um let's not do the cry for help stuff and uh, another thing bro like i feel like people who and this is what i'm gonna say bro i feel like other people who actually Yo, need it the uh the who need like to speak out and stuff about their own situation what they're going like will smith i need will smith to come out and and say everything that's been going in his mind everything the whole truth nothing because i believe his words over that stupid lady that stupid bald lady god i hate that shit So for many, this is the legacy Boy in a Band has left in their minds. And the leg- And he got a little fruity ring, bro, in his middle finger, yo. Legacy David on, Paul bro. Brown will leave what are you on doing? Reserve. I'm of course referring to the infamous <laughs> letter released in August of 2022, and the enclosed allegations that claimed David had on multiple occasions groomed underage- Uh... What? The hell? Oh man, why does it be like the weird people that obviously look weird, that act weird, that are obviously the ones that are gonna end up like that? I mean, it's allegations, so it ain't it ain't confirmed, but I'm just saying, like, you know what I'm saying? I like in these situations, I probably even though I still like can't say for sure, you know, he did it because it's just allegations. It's like niggas like. Like, this nigga, it's more believable, you feel me? Written collectively by a group of women large enough that it was in the double digits, it was originally sent to Dave's family, presumably with the intention being to keep this drama off the internet for the sake of David, and of course to maintain the privacy of his victims. Evidently, these attempts to keep things private were unsuccessful. Exactly why or in what capacity they were unsuccessful is unknown. 
With no other option, the letter was posted on the Boy in a Band subreddit, where it remained up for some time. However, since has either been removed or voluntarily taken down. But thankfully, it was saved and can still be easily found. I'm going to be controversial here and emphasize that everything I'm about to say is alleged as of September 2023. Yeah. I'm not dismissing any claims, but I think I have a duty here to say that nothing in the letter can be verified. Now, again, yeah. I'm not trying to dismiss the claims of the victims. After I've discussed the contents of the letter, I'll go into why their claims seem somewhat plausible. But what exactly was in the letters themselves? I won't read the entire thing, so I'll just... It's kind of weird though lo like low-key where like e okay here's my thing with this right okay why i could see this being just right off the bat before we even get to any info because i have no clue what they're gonna say okay apparently this dude hasn't been doing nothing for like like a year or two you know he hasn't been doing much i'm sure covid didn't help this guy out and then uh so he hasn't done much it's like so well, is his channel even up still let's look him up let's look him up like uh that's my young mooski yeah he's still here yeah get the fuck out of here yeah like bro he hasn't done nothing in three years like oh yeah i saw this i don't know i don't know why i guess it popped up but like yeah uh so whatchamacallit what was i finna say uh damn i think post came out like two years ago right so okay so this was all i was gonna say um so like why would like if this if these allegations these allegations they come out this year or last year i don't remember i don't i didn't pay attention um it's it's just weird right like why would they just now target him you know if, if this was fate why would they just now come out were they planning for two years no i mean every like you could do this in a week you could do this in a month if you were really planning it doesn't take that long to just fake stuff and look for stuff for a whole month and just it, especially if you're all working together to find like um like evidence that you could say and then like all this and that uh yeah it's just why you know like this one i'm saying like this was this like if i'm looking from the outside in which i am i'm like why are they just now you know so it already kind of seems plausible list you know off the saying? key points in order of severity from most severe to least the worst thing mentioned by far was his hebophilia this is sexual attraction to teenagers Blood. and oh. it's also the accusation with the most solid evidence to support it dave had frequently dated girls who were significantly younger than him at one point showing off his 17 year old girlfriend in a video when he what? was 23 at the time <laughs> what the hell Time. First, I guess you need to find a vocalist. For my vocalist, I woke up next to her and figured, yeah, she'll do, which, as I understand it, is the usual method a record label executive will use to pick a pop star. Yeah, Dave, mate, let's not let's not brag about banging 17-year-olds. In the UK, whilst not illegal, this kind of relationship is very... Eh, the law's pretty sh Oh, so it's... so it, so it isn't illegal. But, okay, but, oh, I mean... No, wait, 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 wait. She was 15? Or she was 17? Because if she's 17, I was going to say, in Texas, I don't think it's, wait, no, it's still illegal. Shake I don't know, bro. I, I don't like that. I don't like none of that. With the age difference between him and his partner. That. Morally, that's wrong. I don't care what any law says. Is, is that with such large care. gaps, this gave Dave inherent. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. This is what I was finna say, but like, you know what I'm saying? Don't. Hey. Dominance over. I don't know. Like, I don't Dominance know if it's real, though. Apparently, he was pretty happy to flex. His hebophilia is also linked to what is described as a porn addiction. How people came to know of his porn addiction is unknown, but apparently it manifested with him viewing porn. I was finna say, probably he just opened up to one of the chicks or something. 
or like maybe they figured it out. I don't know. Pornography, where individuals dressed I don't appear know. like I mean, it's a it's, it's a unknown claim. if any such materials were provably illegal. Claim, they don't seem to be pulling any that, punches, so it can really be assumed that. that if he actually was viewing anything that could be considered illegal, they would have made it known. Yeah. Clarification: I'm not trying to exonerate Boy in a Band for this. This is immensely fucking creepy, regardless. You know, if you know, Lollycon fans when I show them a perfect sketch of their house and all of a sudden it isn't just a drawing. Now, that's a joke, by the way. I'm not, I'm not threatening to go to anyone's house. The next key issue was instances of physical abuse and manipulation. It's only pretty recently that people have become more aware of the dangers of parasocial relationships and how yeah. certain individuals are well, able to been irresponsibly about that, foster disproportionate just adoration from their followers. As mentioned before, David would apparently use his mental health as leverage. As a partner, that's an incredibly oh, difficult man, position dude, to be in. We've already, Strangely enough, the term- I've talked about this so much, man. And you know what's crazy? Men ain't the only people that do this, though. It's literally, women do the same thing. But low key, the red flags for women, it's like way easier. You can see it from a mile away. So if you engage in that, it's low key your fault. Did I'm gonna as a skip because like I don't want to hear him talk about that. I'm kind of figure I already know what he's gonna. Fault of his depression, he could flip the guilt from from himself onto his partners, as they couldn't be angry at a man who's fighting. Uh. Yeah. Such a challenging mental oh, it's a sad truth you know, I never that tried mental that. illness can be weapon. I've never tried this. Like I have, I could use this. Not, I mean, you could decide which one you think I have. But um, I've never tried this with this. <laughs> but it, okay, okay. It does, like, thinking about it though, it low-key makes sense. Now, I don't know, uh, actually, yeah, I won't spoil it, but like, does it does it like does it like amplify the effect or what or does it just give you a better buzz i don't know bro i don't know just as easily as it can destroy someone i think most yeah. people have at some point been guilt tripped or made to feel like the problem ends in this manner his bad yeah and mates yeah, as like mentioned that. earlier exactly. may also be victims of this effect claiming they ignored his self I literally just remember that I used to cell phone like every night for years while listening to painfully loud music. But on December 31st, I'm not gonna lie, I be thinking a lot of stuff like on, on the day of too. But not, nothing crazy like this though. I have a lot of repressed memories that um I'd take to the grave with me for sure. Y'all, like, yeah, I don't care. You you kill me, it doesn't matter. It, it's not coming out. Like, if you really wanted to for, for, force my hand to say, like, the worst thing I'd, you'd have to kill me. Um. You mad? Well, that's your fault, bro. Why would you tell him that? Well, you just, come on. Palm completely removes the idea that maybe they themselves were struggling with issues that Dave such wasn't aware of. It's such and also creates like, the weird friends. This is very serious. As mentioned before, David took medication for various himself I'm and I'm those around him. Deep. This is put forward as the key reason why over the past few oh, years. Oh man. Uh yeah, I don't know. His mental health I'll, I'll say it after this, because I think I'm going to turn this into Even with bit. the help of therapy. As ultimately, he was afraid of coming to terms with who he actually is and the things he's done. Now, the allegations were met with a fair degree of skepticism. As said, they don't appear to include anything provably criminal, and fans of David were quick to point out the potential potholes in the accuser's story. Bizarrely, Rachel, who was Ooh. Dave's underage girlfriend, who... Wait, what? Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Even with the help of therapy. As ultimately, he was afraid of coming to terms with who he actually is and the things he's done. Now, the allegations were met with... Uh... Uh... Probably. Maybe they just want to throw under the bus. Okay, yeah, that's... Uh... With a fair degree of skepticism. As said, they don't appear to include anything... Yeah, I mean, how can you prove this, though? Like, that's what I'm saying. How can you prove this? This is why it's like he said, she said. Like, send stuff. You literally can't prove that. Um, Everything else, y'all. Oh, this boy, Southern. Start accusing him. Of I mean, he could say that, too, though. 
uh, I don't know, I don't know, but I've done my own thing in front of him. Yeah, a bunch of math. Yeah, whatever. Being provably yeah. criminal and fans of David. This was the account the letter was posted using. It seems to be a burner account that was soon after abandoned and only adds to the mystery of who any of these individuals were. There were also some chat messages purportedly sent by some of his victims, but these are unverifiable and have generally been dismissed as such. But David's reaction to this is probably the most suspicious piece of evidence surrounding this whole debacle. His complete and unbroken silence on the issue certainly lends credence to the fact that he is guilty of at least some of what's mentioned here. Now there uh or maybe he just don't care. I mean, honestly, though, no, no, let's be serious, though. If someone made an allegation like that to you, too, you definitely would speak out. But maybe this guy just don't care so much. I wouldn't be surprised if he don't care so much that he would let his reputation get slightly tarnished. Because, A, they can't prove it, and B, because he knows the truth, but C, because he just doesn't want to come back to the internet. There is the possibility that David, already in such a negative God headspace, damn, simply 36. couldn't take the stress of defending himself when he had already written off YouTube years ago. But even just a comment from one of his friends rich. saying something like, these are lies and we're gonna sort it out privately, would at least create the idea that there was some nuance to this. But no, just utter radio silence is what we would get. Guess, Looking at his last I mean, post on yeah, Twitter, you can see a pretty solid split between the positive affirming comments made before the letter was published <laughs> and the, the fucking shitty memes <laughs> posted after. There doesn't seem to be a massive demand for Dave to return, and even if he did, it's unlikely anyone aside from his close friends yeah, would want care. to associate with such a controversial figure. Even his yeah. own red. Alright, so that's that, bro. In a nutshell, I mean, he's he's one of those you know people that blew up, wrote the trends, wrote other YouTubers things going on at the time, and then he got tired of doing that and slowly faded away and you know respectful i could respect that he just don't want to come back i could respect that but the allegations though is a little bit weird that he wouldn't try to uh defend himself but i guess he's just at this point he don't care or he's probably completely like off the grid in terms of the internet he probably just doesn't even know that there's any allegation which would be weird because if he had very close friends you think they would tell him call him be like yo bro hey uh i know you don't care about youtube or nothing like that but like people are making these allegations that you are being weird to women and blah 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 and then he's like oh okay and he just hangs up the phone like that's weird